Namaskar, Nileshok here, and welcome back to the course on Introduction to Indian Calendar. Let's begin with this delta between the length of the sidereal solar year and the tropical solar year. It is of about 20 minutes. So that means in three years, the gap between the accumulated difference of this sidereal year or rather years and the tropical solar years would amount to one hour, 20 minutes per year, three times that would be 60 minutes, which is one hour, which also means in about 72 years, how did I calculate 72 years? Remember, one solar day has about 24 hours, and three years of accumulation gives me the difference of one hour. So essentially in 72 years, the gap between the accumulated difference of the sidereal solar year, the position of that particular star, if we decide to hold that as a constant reference point and its specific position versus the position or the point of a tropical solar year, that would have a delta of a one day or approximately one degree. Now, how did I move from one day to one degree? Remember that the ecliptic, the circle or any circle, in this case, the circle of the sun's travel around the earth has 360 degrees and sun travels through those 360 degrees in what, about 365 days. So as if it travels through one degree, approximately one degree every day. And that's how I have approximated one day equal to one degree. But let's do some additional calculations. Based on this, we know that to shift a point, a reference point of this sidereal year, which is a distant star or a specific point with respect to the distant star, the distant star being one of the nakshatras, and the point of the tropical year, which is the point of vernal equinox, they would shift by one degree in 72 years. Let us calculate how long would it take for this particular point of this reference point of the sidereal year to shift through one complete rotation, one complete circle, which is to say through 360 degrees. And we can do this simple calculation by taking 72 years, the time required for the point of this, reference point of this sidereal year to shift through one degree times 360 degrees. And that gives us the period of 25,920 years, for simplicity, we can approximate that to 26,000 years. If you recall, one of the motions of the Earth that we discussed, the precession of the Earth's axis, okay, that is this motion of about 26,000 years, that gets reflected into the astronomy phenomenon in multiple different ways. One of the way is this shift in the reference point of the sidereal year. If we hold it as constant, let's say, there are many other consequences and we will study it in this course. We will study those consequences which are relevant to Indian calendar and we will ignore numerous other consequences which are not relevant to a functional Indian calendar. How can we demonstrate this shift of the point of the sidereal solar year 
with respect to the point of the vernal equinox or the tropical solar year visually? Well, we can do that with the help of the uh, demonstration simulation. This demonstration looks similar to what you are familiar with, but it's not identical. There are a lot more tabs, a lot more things we can play around. And I would ask you not to be overwhelmed by this. First, we will run the simulation where the Earth's axis will move through a complete rotation that is through 360 degrees. And it should take how long? It should take approximately 26,000 years. We are going to begin in antiquity about 26,000 years in the past. So around 24,000 BC, the specific number you can see here is 23,550. Notice what happens. It is actually the Earth's axis and where it is pointing to in the sky is what is changing, okay, like a top. However, so that our comprehension is not severely affected, what we are going to do here is we are going to keep the Earth steady. We are going to keep the Earth's axis steady. We are actually going to keep this reference frame for the six seasons steady. We are going to therefore hold the cardinal points of vernal equinox, autumnal equinox, summer solstice and winter solstice steady. And let the nakshatra system, the nakshatra reference frame, the 27 nakshatra, do the dance around this central piece of earth with the moon and the cardinal points and the seasons. What you'll also notice though on the left side, where you see either the pink dot here, which says NCP, North Celestial Pole, or here the green dot, the SCP, South Celestial Pole, you will notice that they will move because that's exactly what the precession of the Earth's axis refers to. The Earth's axis is pointing at a specific point in the north direction and also pointing at a specific point in the southern direction. But as it goes through its gyratory motion or rotation, where it points to in the sky is going to change. And you will notice that on the left side. And wherever it points to is the point of either the North Pole or the South Pole. And if there happens to be a bright star, we call that star a pole star. In the Northern Hemisphere, we call it North Pole Star. In the Southern Hemisphere, we will call it Southern Pole Star or South Pole Star. Right now, if you notice, right when I say right now, we are going back 20 to 24,000 BC approximately. The pole star is what is our current pole star. Because remember, in 26,000 years, it's going to make a complete circle and come back to the same point, more or less. So this is uh, the polaris, which is, which is our pole star now in the Northern Hemisphere, which was the pole star 26,000 years ago which is where we are going to begin this simulation. If you notice in the Southern Hemisphere, there is no good, bright, distinct star now or 26,000 years ago. So let's begin this simulation.
to keep things simple and easy to comprehend, we are keeping everything constant and the only thing or things that we are moving. Number one is the background reference frame of the nakshatra system. So actually the nakshatras are moving with respect to the cardinal points and the seasons. And we are also showing the change in the points of NCP, North Celestial Pole and South Celestial Pole. And wherever that point is, is where Earth's axis is pointing at that time. And if there happens to be a bright star next to that point of NCP or SCP, we call it a North Pole star or a South Pole star. Thus, a cycle of 26,000 years is completed and NCP and SCP are back to where they started after going through a journey of 360 degrees. Okay, we can do this one more time. Okay, so I'm going to do this reset. You can decide what particular aspect you would like to focus on, which also means you may rerun this particular module to observe different things that are happening around the different cardinal points or around these different areas of seasons or also this circle of NCP and circle of SCP. You may wonder, what is the name of this very bright star or this very bright star? And take this as a swadhyay, something that I would want you to explore using the internet. So let's run simulation one more time. The cardinal points, vernal equinox, autumnal equinox, summer solstice, and winter solstice have very specific significance. I would encourage all of you to make use of the internet. You can search the internet with each of these cardinal point names as a search term to know more about it. They have specific significance. For practical purposes, I will show you one demonstration of how they can be employed to remember when the season begins and when the season ends. For example, you may remember the point of vernal equinox as the point when the Indian solar year begins and also the point that divides the Vasanta Rutu or spring season into half. You may think of the summer solstice as the point where Grishma Rutu or the summer season of two months ends, and then the Varsha Rutu 
or the rainy season of two months begins. You may remember autumnal equinox as the point which is a midway point of the Sharad Rutu or the pre-autumn season or pre-autumn season. And you may think of winter solstice as the point where the Hemant Rutu, again, a autumn season of two months ends and the Shishira Rutu or the winter season of two months begins. So we looked at the solar day. We looked at four cardinal points, two equinoxes and two solstices. We looked at the tropical solar year and sidereal solar year. We noted down the difference between these two solar years, namely, the sidereal solar year is longer by about 20 minutes in comparison to the tropical solar year. The 20 minutes is a very small difference that one would not notice in few years or even during one's lifetime. However, when it accumulates over a long period of time, a lot of things change. We did some crude calculations such as we connected this delta between the sidereal solar year and the tropical solar year with the cycle of the precessions of the Earth's axis of 26,000 years. We also noticed that this precession of the Earth's axis has a lot of consequences. One of the consequence is that the point of NCP changes and therefore the pole star also changes. The other consequence is for the Southern Hemisphere, the point of SCP, South Celestial Pole changes and therefore a South Pole star would also change. We also notice something. As we observe the dance of the nakshatras going in circles, what does that mean? A particular nakshatra at the point of any of these cardinal points also changes. And that has many consequences, especially in the Indian lunisolar calendar which we will explore as we continue through this course.